Last spring, I reviewed the Code 87 key keyboard with MX Blue switches from WASD and fell in love with it. It's been my only daily driver from that point until the last couple months. I thought it would be neat to really customize keys and try something new, so I went back to the good people at WASD and checked out their custom V2 keyboard. This time a full 104 key keyboard and a fully decked out with custom colored keycaps. Let's take a look. I'm Vox, here to make tech easier and more fun, here today with a new keyboard review. WASD makes some really cool keyboards and keycaps, and I wanted to see what their other main keyboard was like. This is a 104 key mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Blue switches and O-ring dampeners on all the keys to prevent the headache inducing sound that can come from MX Blues. More on that in a moment. I used their custom keyboard designer tool to come up with a nice purple, green, and white color scheme against the dark grayish blackest base frame of the keyboard. You may hate it, doesn't matter, you can color it however you want, or replace the keycaps altogether. Their tool gives you a lot of choice, and you can even customize which text style is on the media keys, home, insert, delete keys, and so on. I also chose the Linux Tux Penguin in place of the Windows logo. You know where my heart's at. Overall, I don't have any major complaints about the keyboard. This one is not backlit, I didn't think I would mind, but I did come to miss backlighting after a while. The caps lock, num lock, and scroll lock lights are all super tiny and hard to see, but that's part of the point. The whole keyboard is unbranded and distraction free, it's pretty nice. Virtually no flex, this thing is pretty solidly built. I had no issues with the build quality of the code keyboard throughout this whole past year, and that seems to hold true for, as well for this one. It's rugged. Cherry MX Blues are still my preferred switches thus far and they feel great on here. The problem with my last keyboard was that my typing kept giving my fiance headaches. MX Blue keys are prone to bottoming out from heavy typers, which results in a very sharp sound from the plastic hitting the base. It's not pleasant. So to avoid this, I had them install O-rings on these keycaps. These are little rubber rings that go around the keycap stem and prevent the key from bottoming out, and thus keeps them much quieter. It took a couple days to get used to not pushing the keys down as far, but it works great. Here's a sound comparison using the Zoom H1 Handy Audio Recorder. Not sure if it fully conveys how, how it sounds in real life, but it was worth a shot. Of course, I can't imagine having to install O-rings on a full keycap set myself, that would be quite tedious. The bottom of the keyboard has great rubber gripping, even on the risers, and I'm always grateful that the USB cable is removable. This makes storing it much easier and makes it easier to run the right size cable to where you need it. Very important in a complicated setup like mine. Their flip switch system to change the keyboard to Dvorak, Mac compatible, and so on is also at the bottom, but I don't really mess with that. I did start to miss backlighting, but overall this is a fantastic keyboard. If you're looking for a serious working keyboard with minimal flair, but to survive as a workhorse for hardcore use, this may just be the keyboard for you. They have variants with all mechanical switches, different numbers of keys, 87, 104, 61, and even different plastics available for the keycaps. Or if you already have a keycap set, you can just buy the bare bones board. Very options, such keyboard. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. I'm Vox, and I will see you next time.